A convoy of cars, many with strange antennas attached, pulls up at Heritage Acres in central Saanich on the outskirts of Victoria, BC. Amateur radio operators in British Columbia's capital city don't need to check their calendars to know what the date is. Field Day is an annual amateur radio communications exercise that takes place on the fourth weekend in June. In the exercise, amateur radio operators establish a temporary radio station consisting of portable antennas, temporary structures and generators to power all the radio gear. The purpose of Field Day is twofold. One, it gives amateurs the experience of operating in non-ideal conditions such as one would experience in a natural disaster or other emergency, and secondly, it encompasses a contest aspect. The contest aspect of Field Day is well known. Amateur radio clubs across North America establish Field Day stations and are awarded points for the number of contacts that they can make in a 24-hour period. Victoria, BC's West Coast Amateur Radio Association has long participated in the Field Day activities and has always done respectably well in the rankings. Setup for Field Day is usually a fairly straightforward endeavor, but enthusiasts for the 2012 year were met with a unique challenge. For the 2012 Field Day year, Heritage Acres was double booked. The Victoria T-Bird Club met on the morning of Saturday the 23rd, meaning the usual routine of setting up antennas on the morning of Field Day was out of the question. The solution was to gather on the Friday afternoon before the Saturday morning activities were set to start, so that the antennas could be set up beforehand. And 10 enterprising radio hams braved the rainy second day of summer to do just that. The antenna setup itself has been narrowed down to a fine art, and every year the configuration for the antennas seems to be a little bit different. This year, three HF antennas were initially set up on Friday afternoon, with a fourth random wire HF antenna set up on Saturday morning. Two VHF antennas were also set up, and a third VHF antenna, for use with packet radio systems, was also erected. With six antennas overall, things were off to a very good start. The method used to string antennas high up in the trees is really quite unique. Dave, VE7DFP, is the keeper of the antenna launcher, or, is it as more affectionately known, the potato gun. Weighted tennis balls are attached to a long length of fishing line and fired through the trees from the antenna launcher. A length of rope is then attached to the fishing line and pulled up over a stout tree branch. The end of the long wire HF antenna is then affixed to the rope and pulled high into the sky. The end result was three antennas suspended high above the ground and ready for action. It turns out the same method also works for VHF dipole antennas, which need to be hosted high in the air in order to get decent reception. After about three hours of work in the rain, the antennas were set up and out of the way, and the group of radio amateurs disbanded until the next morning. Saturday began with weather that was marginally better than the previous day, marginally better because it wasn't raining, at least not when the day began. Early in the morning, around 9 a.m., the setup for the radio equipment began. In total, five stations were set up, one for VHF voice, one for HF voice, and one for HF CW. Additionally, there were two multi-purpose HF stations where both voice and CW modes could be operated. Once it was decided that there would be four HF radio stations, it was determined that another antenna needed to be set up. And it was a good thing that Jens, an arborist from Duncan, was present at field day with his giant slingshot. Jens and his slingshot took the place of the potato guns from the previous day, firing ropes high over the trees so the antenna could be strung up. And by about 11.30 a.m., the 800-plus feet of wire antenna was in place and ready to go. Meanwhile, elsewhere at field day, 11 a.m. arrived and the other three field day stations became active, and contacts began pouring in. In order to ensure contacts were only counted once, the field day operators use a computer logging program. Each radio station has a laptop computer running the logging software, and all laptops remain synchronized via a wireless LAN. When a contact is logged at one station, it is available for view at all other radio stations, meaning the possibility for logging duplicate entries is almost entirely eliminated. As the morning continued, Heritage Acres became a very busy place. 
The Victoria T-Bird Club appeared in full force just after 10 a.m., and the radio amateurs found themselves in an increasingly small amount of space. Nevertheless, field day continued successfully, and the radio operators even found it possible to explain the hobby to interested members of the car club. Saturday eventually ended, Sunday began, and the radios kept operating through the night. By 8.30 Sunday morning, over 300 contacts had been logged on CW and 150 on voice, covering nearly every province and state in North America. As the morning continued, radios continued operating, but with slightly reduced gusto. And by 11 a.m., the contest was officially over, and the Swedish dancers came in and began to take over the space. Despite the challenges introduced by both the weather and the usage of space, Field Day 2012 was a resounding success. With 357 CW contacts, 183 voice contacts, and over 800 total points, the amateur radio operators that made Field Day 2012 such a great success can certainly take a well-deserved rest. For INET, this is Christopher reporting.